Hey guys, it's just about the end of August. Uh, where has another month gone? But here we are. I've been meaning to do one of these videos for a little while, but this is the first month I actually took some notes throughout the month so to uh, prepare for it. These are my favorites for August 2019. There's going to be a companion blog post up in the corner and down in the description uh, where I have affiliate links where possible and links basically to everything that I'm mentioning. So if any of those uh, you think are interesting to you, go ahead and click on that link and it'll take you to the blog post where I list everything with a little bit of detail. Thing number one, my favorite tabletop game this month was a cute little indie game called Marrying Mr. Darcy. I don't have it with me because it actually belongs to my sister. We played it on a cousin's girls weekend um, in a cabin this month um, and we had a lot of fun. It was my first time playing it. It's an RPG based on the Pride and Prejudice novel um, and movie. A lot of the events kind of are taken straight out of either the book or the movie, little quotes and things. But even if you haven't read the book or the, seen the movie, you can still find it enjoyable. One of my cousins hadn't done either and she still got into the game and had a lot of fun. You play as one of the female characters and you basically have to build up your stats to make yourself desirable to the male characters who will then propose to you at the end of the game and you get points based on who you end up marrying and on your stats. Thing number two, my favorite mobile game this month, is The Room Old Sins. This is the fourth installment in the Room series from Fireproof Games. I've played all of them. They are um, paid games in the App Store and they are so worth the five bucks you spend on them because these games are so intricate and unique. Um, in like the game genre. They utilize the format of smartphones and tablets really well. Um, they're these like tactile puzzle games where you manipulate these like complex puzzle boxes and stuff. Um, some of the later titles have you more moving from space to space, taking objects from one spot to another. Um, and it's all in this sort of Lovecraftian steampunk world that's really kind of creepy. Um, usually I'm not much for like horror and suspense, but I enjoy these games a lot uh, for their play style, and so I get into the story based on that. Uh, but you should definitely check those out if you haven't already. Thing number three is my daughter's favorite toy this month, which was her Fisher Price tea set. This thing is super cute. It sings, it like plays pouring noises, um, plays little bits of music and counts and tells colors and stuff. It comes with like this little cookie puzzle and two little cups. And um, she has really just enjoyed playing, especially with the teapot. She'll pour the tea into her Winnie the Pooh Bear's mouth and just sing along to the teapot in the car. And she just really enjoys playing with it. Um, it's super cute. And like, having a tea party is one of the things that my husband always kind of dreamed of doing with his little daughter and it's super cute that she's really into it. Fun story, we actually received two of these for her birthday um, and so we ended up leaving one unopened and giving that to her younger cousin at her first birthday a month later um, to sort of gift that along. Thing number four is a favorite YouTube channel this month. Annie Smith here on YouTube makes planner videos, but they're a little bit different from what I see in a lot of channels. She doesn't just do like plan with me's and flip throughs. She does a lot of really practical hands on how to use your planner kinds of videos. And I think those are super valuable, evergreen and awesome. Um, she's been posting a lot of stuff about like projects and about the, um, the kinds of pages she uses and how to plan in a large family and stuff like that. Um, she's in a traveler's notebook if that's relevant to you and I'm going to link her here and also in that blog post and um, you should check her out if you're not already subscribed. She doesn't know I'm saying this but I think you should go check her out. And then thing number five is my favorite household item. If you watch Thursday's video, you'll, I have already mentioned it uh, briefly, we got a robot vacuum for our house and it has been life changing. <laughs> we have a husky who sheds that's what huskies do so we end up having just tumbleweeds of loose fur around the hallways and um, and sweeping or swiffering just cleaning the floors is my least favorite chore and so it gets put off it gets just the corners and the floors are just generally covered in fur until 
oh, two weeks ago, we got this robot vacuum. It's not a Roomba, it's a slightly cheaper brand. It's called Cority. It was about $200, and then there was like a $500, uh, sorry, a $50 coupon on Amazon that I was able to take advantage of. We actually used our Amazon um, credit card reward points to pay for it, um, and it's it's been great. It works great. Uh, I guess apparently either a robot vacuum can be a good robot or a good vacuum, and the cheaper ones tend to be a better vacuum, but then they'll just run into things more often. So that's the camp that we're in. Uh, but it's not like ramming into furniture or hurting anything. Um, it just maybe is less efficient with pathfinding, but it does fine, it seems to at least. Uh, we have it on a schedule. It doesn't sync with your app. It actually has a physical remote, which I kind of like. I'm kind of sick of like smart devices being marketed as if that's a good thing, uh, which basically means that they just were too cheap to include a remote control of their own and just make you download bloatware for your phone instead. That is a rant for a different day. But this one has a physical remote with the buttons for all of the different settings. Um, and I just have it programmed to go at 1 a.m. every morning and do a sweep of the whole house, return to its home. And then in the morning, I just have to empty the dust tray, which is just full of a little, little pile of Max fur. Um, and then our floor is just are in a general state of tidiness that we haven't had in far too long with a busy lifestyle with our little baby. It's uh, it's good to have the safe, the secure knowledge that the baby's not just going to eat a handful of Max fur that's lying around as she's crawling around the house. Um, and it's just it's just really nice to have, and it is super cute. <laughs> So check out that link as well if you're interested in the particular model that we got. I do recommend it. I'm sure that other brands are just as fine, but I can tell you that the brand that we got works great on Husky Fur. Um, you just want to make sure to clean that filter once or twice a week and keep everything working well. So there you go, five things that I'm enjoying for the month of August. Uh, let me know down below what your favorites are for August, if there's anything in particular that you've been super digging, any shows you've been watching, books you've been reading, products you've been using, love to share, and I'm always looking for new stuff to, to read and watch. So <laughs> let me know down below what you're into, especially YouTube channels, by the way. I'm always looking out for new YouTube channels. Um, if you found this video interesting and you want more of me, I post videos twice a week, so be sure to subscribe, and then I will see you in the next one on Thursday, which, my goodness, it's going to be another monthly plan with me video for September, because I have no idea what's going on with time, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye.